Most people live their lives one of two ways. Either they're on the lookout or they're ready to look out. Hello again, everyone. I'm Eli's dad with Project Eli, where we educate, we lead, and we inspire. And the way that you internalize certain thoughts makes a tremendous difference in the way you get results. You know, when I'm teaching people sales, I often point out to them that intonation, the way that you say something, greatly affects the meaning that a person will perceive. Let me give you the example I always use. If I say to you, I didn't say he stole that money, that means I, I didn't say he stole that money. I could say, I didn't say he stole that money. It means somebody else said it. I could say, I didn't say he stole that money. It means I implied it. I didn't say he stole that money. Well, he did something else to acquire it. You follow what I'm saying? So the where you place the accents on what you're thinking internally greatly affects your, your results that you're going to get. Now, for most of us, the certainty of misery is more desirable than the misery of uncertainty. You know, two things cause change. One is inspiration and the other is desperation. And whenever you pursue a course of action, one of the things that we all do, no matter what it is, is we try to be efficient. Efficiency means to do whatever you're doing the right way. Effectiveness means to do the right thing. The key is to learn how to be effective. Activity, that's only doing things. Effectiveness is doing what needs to be done to get the results that you want. I'll give you an example. You know, somebody's in the gym and they're looking around after the ball game and you say, what are you doing? You say, well, I'm looking for my lost wallet. Well, where did you lose it? Well, I lost it over there. Well, then what are you looking over here for? Because there's light over here. Hello, McFly. You got to look where you lost the wallet. If you want, you know, he's efficient looking with his light, but not very effective. So where do inspirations come from? The ability to dream was not given to mock you. It's a divine gift intended to give you a glimpse of the things in store for you. No one is mocked with the desire which he has no ability to attain. Our heart's desires inspire our creative energies to do the things that we long for. Flowers and fruits come to their natural flowering and ripeness at the appointed time. The winter does not surprise the buds before they have an opportunity to open up. The fruit is ready to drop off the trees before the snow comes. The birds fly south at just the right time. Nature takes care of its creatures at just the right time. Why should we be any different? What is now proven was once someone's imagination. Put yourself in a position that gives you the opportunity to see the entire landscape. Be on the lookout. The best vantage point gives you an advantage. Progress is how we measure ambition. If you want progress, you've got to move. If you want growth, you've got to risk. And keep in mind, you know, the stuff I'm going to tell you now, the stuff I'm going to give you now, has been proven by the great achievers of the world. And remember, it's only a miracle until we understand the science. Then it's no longer a miracle. It becomes a technology, a powerful internal technology. You are the only one accountable for the way that you feel. Your emotions come from your thoughts. You can control your thoughts. Therefore, you can control your emotions. You're feeling terrible or amazing due to your interpretations about the events of your life. You have the choice to see everything as you want. Some might argue that reframing positively is delusional. Well, actually, it's the most pragmatical thing that you can do. 
Because actually, what advantage is going to give you to be a negative thinker? Nobody is ever going to take away from you the possibility to choose your thoughts. This is the ultimate freedom, real free will. We must begin to take life consciously, for the solution of all problems lies in this. The second man, the infinite mind that resides inside all of us, is trying to become self-conscious in the body. The desired labor of the infinite mind is to merge with the current condition and to advance it. The infinite mind calls things that are not seen as though they are seen, and then the unseen becomes seen. Our inner conversations represent, in various ways, the world that we live in. Most people abandon themselves to negative inner talking, yet expect to retain a command of their lives. It is only what is done now that counts even though its effects may not become visible until tomorrow. It requires an inner effort of intense attention to listen attentively, to look out as though what you have heard is to create. The events and relationships of life are your inner words made visible. Our attitudes unfold within us in the form of mental conversations. Inner talking from the premises of fulfilled desire is the way to consciously create circumstances. Our inner conversations are perpetually all around us. We have only to see them and unfold them by placing them in their proper order. When you possess a singleness of purpose, a true burning desire, you will find that your surroundings, what you hear and what you experience, begin to relate to that burning desire. The great connection between the universal mind and our state of consciousness is created and empowers us to a new and useful starting line. Therefore, what we desire to see and hear without, we must see and hear within first. The whole manifested world has been unfolded by unseen thoughts evolving into creations that we now not only see and feel, but that we also, in most cases, take for granted. So, what is faith? Faith is trusting in advance what will only make sense in reverse. A dream is a big idea with a strategy. A fantasy is a big idea without a strategy. Enlist the aid of the ultimate partner, the universal mind, with a passion-filled vision, and the corridor for the ultimate communication will open for you as it has for the world's greatest achievers. When you practice the art of controlled inner speaking, you'll be able to consciously use your imagination to transform and channel the immense creative energies of your inner speech from the emotional level to the physical level. When you reflect upon the story of the advancement of mankind, wasn't controlled inner speaking the catalyst that has taken us from the invention of the wheel to the creation of the light bulb to placing a man on the moon with additional advances happening more and more frequently every day? Every stage of man's progress is made by the conscious exercise of his imagination. This occurs when he matches his inner speech to his fulfilled desire. As we control our inner talking, matching it to our fulfilled desires, we can lay aside all other processes. We simply act by clear imagination and intention. We imagine the wish fulfilled and carry on mental conversations from that premise. The right inner speech is the speech that would be yours for you to realize your ideal. In other words, it is the speech of fulfilled desire. Now, 
if we don't consciously plant the seeds of what we want in the gardens of our minds, we're going to end up with weeds. If we want to discover the unlimited possibilities within us, we must find a goal big enough and grand enough to challenge us to push beyond our limits and discover our true potential. We all must create a magnificent obsession. Next time we get together, we're going to give you the how-to. And always remember, hey, don't ration the passion, fashion the passion. I'm Eli's dad.